Okay, and we're back. Um, there's um, one thing I also wanted you to notice real quickly. Uh, right here, uh, somebody else uh, mentioned this on uh, on one of the Shining uh, videos. Uh, the pool table right here. Notice the big uh, the big hole where all the balls come out. Uh, is here. Not that there's a little hole on a pool table where the white ball comes out, but this is where all the, the colored balls will come out of this big hole. I want you to notice that because I will be noticed. Um, uh, Kubrick will do a mirror thing later on where the table is not like this uh, in this position uh, when Danny rides around in his motor and his uh, little bicycle, and we'll see that later on. So I just wanted to mention that so hopefully you remember that, that the big hole right here is on the pool table, and we'll see later on that changes. And that's Kubrick saying uh, this is an, a mirror image. Um, okay, so uh, here comes Wendy, and there's all that luggage thing I already talked about, and they're coming over here. Now, this is, a, this is another thing. Some genius figured this out uh, on YouTube. Um, that's a Jack stares at this guy, and, and, uh, and God, I would have never seen this in a million years. This guy was a... <laughs> you think I'm a nut? You should see the nuts that are out there who, I mean, these people must be like, oh, worshipping this movie. Uh, anyways, he noticed, quite correctly, that I shouldn't call them nuts. Um, he's a, this guy's a genius who ever figured this out. He noticed that Jack is staring at this guy, and then somehow, although I can't, uh, I can't, I'll zoom in a little bit, but uh, I guess you've got to get the Blu-ray to see it. But apparently the guy noticed that this guy right here that Jack is staring at, this worker that's working on this bookcase or whatever it is, he's wearing the jacket that, that Jack is going to be wearing later on when he when he tries to murder uh, everybody and goes nuts. When when Jack goes, goes nuts, um, he, uh, he sees this guy wearing the same jacket he's wearing, and this guy pointed out uh, on, the, on the internet, he said, that means this is actually Delbert Grady, and, and, and uh, I don't know. It got too complicated for me. But when I first saw it, I was like, eh, you know, just like what you guys probably are thinking of me. Yeah, he's a, he's a little crazy. Until you see the guy pointed out the other thing he noticed, and that is, watch, uh, you can't see it here. You'll have to actually watch the movie, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm only showing you stills, uh, I'm not as good at uh, video production to show you actual things, but if you watch Jack, um, uh, if you watch Jack, he, um, I think I have, let me see, no, all right, well, anyways, right after he sees him, Jack limps right here. He'll do something funny with his foot, uh, and, and those who haven't seen the movie, Jack gets his foot hurt because he falls down the staircase, which we're actually about to see in a few minutes. But he, Jack fake limps in this sequence right here. And then what Jack will do is he'll turn around and stare at Bill Watson. It's a whole kind of little creepy scene. I, I, I don't know if I have all the photographs. I don't think I have Jack li uh, limping, but you have to watch the movie to see Jack limp. He'll like stutter with his step. And uh, here's this shot. Let me see. No, sorry. Boy, I really screwed that up. I was going backwards. All right. But you, you, didn't, you might not have seen him, but just before this, when, you see, now he's staring at Bill Watson. He's, he's turning around at Bill Watson for whatever reason, you know. And But just before that, he actually limped right here. You'll have to watch the movie to see him do that. So this guy pointed it out. I don't know what it has to do with the moon landings or whatever, but it's kind of, uh, kind of interesting. Um... One thing that's very interesting is, if you look up at these windows, this looks like a 6, and that looks like a 9. For 1969 is uh, is when the, the, the moon landings happen. So I just thought that was kind of neat in the window pane. And maybe that's what J Jack is... He's not necessarily looking at this guy with a jacket. Maybe maybe the point is, is that Jack is looking at the jacket so you're supposed to it's like the duck thing you know you're supposed to look at the guy with the jacket and then the, the jacket is the, the guy with the jacket is touching the wall so you're supposed to look on the wall and see uh 69 you know 1969 you know uh uh actually i don't know let me zoom in on this and maybe we'll make a discovery or live discovery for you um uh do you think now i can see a 69 
So I'll give you that. It's 1969 is when the Apollo happened. I don't know if there's any other symbolism of it was July uh, uh, July uh, uh, 16th is when they launched. July 20th is when they landed on the moon. It took about four days to get to the moon, supposedly. Uh, there, here's some mention of Indian stuff, and there are some Indian, of course, all the Indian motifs, and so that's why people have gotten off on the, you know, this movie's all about Indians. Uh, it's, it's like when, the, you know, people on JFK were saying, oh yeah, Donald Duck uh, to murder JFK so that nobody, uh, uh, this. I, I do love this sculpture. I don't even know what that is. You know, somebody in the future will find out what that is, but it's, it's uh, amazing, uh, uh, an amazing little Bizarre. I mean, that's that's the scariest thing in the movie. I think is that it's a very bizarre, uh, almost like a like a, a part of a burned up. Uh, maybe it's the burned up Apollo One uh, uh, thing. Anyways, all right. Sorry, I know this is long enough. I don't need to make it any longer. Uh, oh, here's Jack looking again. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, Almond saying all the best people stayed at this hotel. Uh, this is an interesting shot. This is a shot of Danny at the games room. Uh, interesting thing is um, the uh, American uh, flag is hung up wrong, uh, you would think, or it's the mirrored image of the American flag. In other words, if you look in a mirror, uh, this would be hung up right. So uh, 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 this, is a, this is a mirror here. Uh, this is a mirror image that he's uh, doing that. Um, I, I went back to this thing again. Um, uh, it's interesting. It, it was a stopping place for the jet setters, people who flew jets. Who else flew jets? I think the astronauts did before they flew uh, rockets. And here is an interesting statement, even before anybody knew what a jet set was. It's just like, why would you mention that? You know, well, uh, because... Kubrick is giving you a second confirmation. Whenever he says things twice, it means this is important. Jet set is important. It's related to the astronauts. They were all jet fighter pilots before they were. They were jet fighter pilots, and then they were, um, uh, of course, uh, jet uh, test uh, pilots, and then they became astronauts after that. Lots of movie stars. Hmm, movie stars. I think the astronauts were movie stars. All the best people. Hey, here's a Danny again. I don't know. I don't know if this is supposed to be. I think in Colorado. Uh, yeah, I think in Colorado or something. I don't know if that's the flag of Colorado. I've never looked up. I should look up the the flag. Maybe somebody can leave on a comment what flag that is. Uh, it's interesting. It's got the sun and the red and red, white, and blue and the the sun. There's got to be uh, obviously Kubrick. He, he did the thing with the American flag. This flag is important. I'm sorry, I haven't figured that out for you yet. Uh, leave it in the comment or make your own movie. Okay, here we go with the twin girls. Again, in the book, there's only one girl. Uh, and Kubrick changed it to two girls. Why would you change it to two girls? Everyone's like, oh, to make the movie creepy. Well, one girl would have been, well, make three girls. That'll make it even more creepier. Um, the people point out this, you know, the man with the, the, the man with the, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I would have never noticed, but the, yeah, there's the man with a, a skier with a knife about to stab the little girl. I mean, I'm sure uh, Kubrick uh, liked that. There's also this poster in the background that means something. I don't know what a horse and a cowboy means. Uh, but anyways, but I do know what the, what the two uh, twin girls mean. And that is that the project before Apollo, the NASA project before the Apollo, and this is, somebody else uh, taught me this I, on the internet. I didn't uh, make this up. Um, but it is a truth. You can look it up. And the, Paul, the project before Apollo was what's called the Gemini Project. And in horoscopes, Gemini are the twins. And uh, what this is, is um, Kubrick's telling, uh, saying to Danny Kubrick, he's telling himself, uh, hey, the Gemini Project is going on right now. The Apollo Project is not going on. And we'll see this many times. I will mention, hey, the Apollo, pro the Gemini Project is going on. Uh, and then we will see the death of the Gemini Project and the birth of uh, the Apollo Project, one of the most gruesome uh, scenes in the movie, uh, later on. But for right now, this all every time you see the girls, it's Kubrick saying the Gemini Project is going on, so Danny is not allowed to shoot the Apollo uh, fake moon landings. 
So that's what's going on. This is the first introduction to the girls, other than Ullman's story about the girls, uh, which he mentioned before. And again, there were no, there were not two girls in the book. Uh, the, the Kubrick made up uh, the two girl Gemini uh, twin uh, uh, symbolism. Uh, here's uh, them going to the hotel. Um, I'm sure there's stuff that there's a lot of there's a lot of strategic stuff with a hotel the doors not making sense that you can go look there's people that have done a lot of good things about that apparently um, in the 90s somebody did the Duke Nukem thing and did a, a, a hotel from the shining and and uh, Duke Nukem or doom I think it was doom the the game doom and they wanted to let gamers go through the hotel the shining hotel and uh, they know that they were the first purpose people that noticed that the Shining Hotel did not make any sense. So if you want, there's some a lot of great videos on how the the the, the actual the, the the whole hotel doesn't even uh, make any sense uh, uh, there. Again, something that people point out that oh, Kubrick is terrifying you by making doors in the wrong positions. Silly. Uh, looking at Danny's room, nothing interesting, and the bathroom where uh, Jack will try to kill Wendy later on. Spoiler alert. Okay, this is, a, this is an interesting the fade shot to the uh, maze after this. Um, what's interesting about this is, if you see, they're not, they're walking past the entrance of the maze. They're not walking, you know, out of the maze, you know, which actually would have been even more stranger, but they're walking past the entrance of the maze. And now if we look at the what they're discussing here, they, he, uh, Ullman is saying he's turning and turning it to them and saying, hey, it's quite an attraction here. The walls are 13 feet high. He's talking about the maze. Well, there's the hotel. Uh, here's the people, and they're walking this way. Kubrick again telling this doesn't make sense. Wh how? Where were they at that they walked by this? How did they walk by this maze the first time? And, Ullman, and, and Wendy or Jack didn't say, what the hell is this thing? And Ullman tell me, telling me when they walk this way and explain it to them the maze. Why would you explain the maze when you're heading towards a hotel? What they do is, what they do, jump over the maze or take a helicopter over the maze and fly to a 7-Eleven over here and then they're, now they're walking past the maze back to the hotel? No, obviously they had to have walked past the maze but the first time and then they're walking past the maze the, the, the second time. Why is he telling them about the maze the second time they pass the maze, how could you? Uh, how <laughs> Cooper just going? How stupid can you be that you wouldn't have noticed the maze the first time that you went there? You know, let alone where did they go? You know, if they didn't go to the maze, what what else? Is there, is there outhouses in there? They they all took a crap uh, out, out uh, be past the mazes or something? Well, we just saw a bathroom, so that's not the explanation. Maybe Cooper, uh, he was a big bathroom guy, so uh, maybe that's why he showed us a, a shot of the bathroom to make sure you didn't think they were outhouses there. Let alone uh, did they take helicopters and over the uh, even if you took a helicopter over the maze you would he, somebody would point down and so again the bizarre thing is why is he explaining about the maze as they're walking obviously uh, back to the hotel they had to have passed the maze before Kubrick says it doesn't make he, he's you know we'll see later on that he's He's actually remaking Alice in Wonderland. It's really what he's doing. He he's doing this uh, the the uh, uh, Carol Lewis uh, uh, thing of uh, that 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 nothing makes sense, you know. And if you look at the Apollo endings, you'll agree. Nothing does make sense. Uh, okay, the hedges us. And by the way, I'm sorry I didn't point out, but you'll have to go back to my previous uh, picture. Uh, the, the, the the first helicopter picture that we saw of the thing where I told you about the 42 cars, uh, there was no maze on that first picture. And it's like, the, the, Stanley Kubrick is not the type of person that's, uh, you know, that says, oh yeah, people won't notice uh, in my movie that I didn't have. He, he just, uh, sooner or later, in the two years he shot this movie, he would have said, oh, you know what, I better change that first shot with the hotel with no maze around it. You know what I mean? I mean, this maze literally is within a, a, a couple of hundred feet of the hotel, and we saw full helicopter shot of the hotel and there was no maze. I'm sorry, I don't want to go all the way back to those things. You'll have to go back or just watch the movie and you'll see the first shot of the hotel does not have this gigantic maze right there, right next door to the hotel, this close. Kubrick is showing you this shot for a reason. You know, this maze is some sort of mystical uh, representation of uh, the nightmare that it was for Kubrick to shoot the uh, fake the Apollo moon landings. That's what Kubrick is saying. I'm not saying it. Um, all right. 
Uh, somebody pointed this out that if you watch the movie, this car almost looks like it's going to hit uh, them, and it, and then Cooper cuts the movie right, right as as the car almost runs them over. I thought that was kind of funny, so that kind of disturbs me every time I see that or I look out for it. But Kubrick just with his editing is amazing. Uh, this has got to be something here with a box like weird and the, the wagons painted red and blue or red, white, and blue wagon. I don't know. Something's going on there. People are counting windows and whatever. I don't know. There might be 21 windows too. I don't want to waste your time with that. Um, he's talking about... Uh, here's the Indian thing again. I, uh, you know, this this Indian thing that people do, The you know, trying to say the whole movie's about that again is to me is silly, but uh, I don't even see how, you know, they mention Indians a couple of times. Uh, I mean, it's possible Kubrick included that to, to, to talk about. Here's uh, a few Indian attacks as they were building it. That's kind of, that's putting the Indians in a bad derogatory manner, if you ask me, you know? I mean, uh, maybe we, I'm sure, uh, we attacked the Indians <laughs> to build the hotel there, too. So it's interesting that, that, if anything, the movie is disparaging towards Indians here, you know, or I don't know. Um, but anyways, I don't see an overwhelming, uh, somebody will have to do a movie about the Indian aspect of the of the Shining movie and, and convince me that that's what Kubrick was intending here, but uh, we'll see a sweater later on that has no Indians on it, and uh, I think you'll be convinced that Indians were low on uh, his mind. Um, one thing I want to talk about this shot is sometimes a Kubrick walk uh, puts the number twelve uh, uh, with with objects. Uh, notice there's uh, there's two of the lamps work, and then one does not. So one. Two is twelve, you know. So that's a if Kubrick really did that, he's a, he's a genius. The other thing he did that people notice is there's this ladder right here, and uh, there's two ones right here. So you can see Apollo eleven, and you're like, eh, I don't think so. Well, it took a lot of effort to make that thing. I mean, why make two of them? You know, I mean, it's aesthetically it's beautiful, but you put a ladder too. There's just too many coincidences. Uh, also, here's Gatman Crothers. Uh, the, the kitchen guy who is coming from there. He literally looks like he's walking from the, the ladder, so why have that? It's to draw your attention. Kubrick puts confirmations. Why not have uh, Scatman Crowther? What, what is he doing over there? He's the kitchen guy, you know? I mean, I, I don't know what he was doing there. You have to see the movie, but I, I think he was touching a table or something, but he could have come from anywhere else. Kubrick is drawing your eyes to this symbolism, Apollo 11, right there. All right. There's another shot of that. Uh, oh, this is a neat line everyone loves uh, on the internet. Uh, did you get tired of bombing the universe? Um, I believe this is a reference because technically we'll see that uh, Kubrick has two projects in this movie. Uh, the filming of 2001 and the Apollo 11 landing. And what I think this is, to me, the reference to this, bombing the universe, is, uh, I hate to spoiler alert, and... Uh, I, I hate doing this. Uh, if you, you should turn off this movie right away if you want to watch uh, the movie Doctor Strange, love. I am forewarning you. I'm going to tell you the end right now, so turn it off. Anyways, uh, in the end of uh, uh, Doctor Strange, love, the movie that Stanley Kubrick made just before 2001, so Kubrick made Doctor Strange, love, then he made 2001, and then he made Clockwork Orange. Those are the, the order of the movies. But at the very end of uh, Doctor Strange Love, uh, it ends with uh, everybody nuking each other on the Earth. Uh, the Russians nuke us with thousands of nuclear bombs and uh, this. So to me, the reference here is that uh, Stanley Kubrick, Danny, Jack, and Wendy have not filmed. The, the, this is this is the end of the filming of... Uh, this is this is supposed to represents the end of the filming of Doctor Strange Love, and now he's going to be filming uh, 2001. Uh, is the is the metaphor that is going on here? So that is what this is because we saw Danny. There were no video games in there in the 80s. There were plenty of of video games that Cooper could have put in there, but he was just playing darts, and very few people. Uh, think of darts as bombing things usually uh, in fact Jack says before he found the games room or he's playing video games something like that you know I can't remember what he said but uh, the last thing we expected him to see yeah you know, when, when Jack said that before to Ullman when he was uh, waiting with his luggage um, I was expecting the next shot to show Danny you know playing some sort of video game the way Dad Jack was talking but no he's playing a sophisticated you know British pub uh, uh, game of uh, 
of darts, you know. So, uh, anyways, uh, so bombing the universe has to do with, uh, this is the end of uh, Doctor Strange Love. Uh, you can watch the end of that movie if you want. Alrighty, we'll stop here.